end to the tech giant's eight-week run in which it gained nearly 30 percent and climbed within five percent of its all-time high. Let's bring in Carter Worth of Worth Charting. Carter, our viewers know you quite well. You're uh, a, a man who is level in your emotion, and yet this call went out today and it had exclamations in the headline, and, and that really caught my eye. So, so walk us through. Well, I, hold on. I, uh, I, I, yes, uh, but no exclamation points. I hold back on those, but it, uh, certainly in fact, <laughs> to write uh, sell it all is um, uh, certainly uh, definitive, right, and, and emphatic. And here, here's the thing. Uh, we know, before we look at the charts, we know that what makes a market is just exactly what you see in Apple. It's the largest stock out there. It's 7.3% of the S&P, and it's covered by some 40, 50 analysts. In fact, there are people whose 12-month price targets are as high as 220 and as low as 140 from top 10, top five brokerage firms. And there is the rub. How can one man or woman or one analyst think it's worth 220 and one think it's worth 140? with the same access, the same information, the same spreadsheets and cues in case. And then here's a technician. I'm sure the technicians that want to ride momentum, my thinking is, this technician, that it's just too steep, uncorrected, almost unnatural. Let's look at some angles. So the first chart is a comparative chart. And it's just Apple versus the QQQ. It's, it's peers, if you will. And it's a one-year comparative chart. And we know the spread is what it is. The numbers are Apple's up 16, 70 percent, the Q's down 10. If we take this back a bit further, take a look at a five-year chart. We have the same spread, uh, meaning Apple outperforming the QQQ, of which is, of course, a big part. So there is some autocorrelation. But Apple's up 340 percent, Q's are up 130. Or the 10-year final comparative chart, we know that, again, Apple has more than doubled the other large 100 stocks in the NASDAQ 100 represented by the QQQ. So, but the here and now is what sort of gives me pause. Let's look at two charts. What we know from the absolute low of June, June 16th, Apple is up 35%. And the angle of the line is becoming increasingly unnatural. No givebacks, no, not even a, a down two day sequence. And so not only do we have that sort of unnatural uh, line, we are up against a downtrend line, which is annotated quite clearly there on the screen. It also is otherwise known as a megaphone. Forget about what that kind of talk is. It's a, it's, it's a move to a difficult level. And if you pull this back and we do one more chart, it's just putting this in uh, context of going back to a, a pre-pandemic uh, uh, wipeout. And so, again, there'll be people who say, no, you stick with momentum. You ride it until it starts to show you reasons not to. My thinking is that to some extent, this is almost the face of fear. People are hiding uh, or wanting to be in this particular uh, stock, uh, maybe at the exclusion of all others. For instance, of the stocks in the QQQ, there were only 10 up today, uh, but Apple leading the way yet again. Just a little too popular, a little too happy, a little too good. Could, could fear, Carter, in this market context that we're in, um, keep that unnatural line uh, unnatural? <laughs> well, I mean, it, certainly you can get, you know, as the expression goes, overbought or oversold and stay that way for great periods of time. But if one were to use oscillators, I don't particularly, but you could look at a MACD or an RSI, you could look at a Bollinger Band, or one can just look at where this is in relation to where it's been. Uh, a move like this uh, is hard to sustain much longer. And at a minimum, if one's long, you take a little off or you write some calls. Or if you have the dexterity, you try some options to do something rather than just blindly stay long. Right. Carter, thank you. Carter Braxton Worth. Sure. And we have to uh, do a correction here.